such an exciting day over here at Vessel's 21st Century Classroom because my second children's book just came in the mail. So this is the first time I'm gonna get to see a physical copy of it. I've seen a layout and approved copies online but this is the first time in person. I'm so excited. But before I unbox, I do wanna let you know that we are doing a giveaway in this video. I wanna give one of you guys a free copy of my new book, Bold Women in History, and all you have to do to get a copy is look for the Hidden Penny Lane somewhere in this video. She's gonna pop up somewhere on the screen. When you see her, go down into the comments and comment with the timestamp where you saw her and let me know who your favorite bold woman in history is. Just so you know, the contest is only open to US residents and we will be picking a winner a week from the date when this video is released. All right, so now let's get to the fun part. I get to unbox my book for the first time. Gosh, it looks so good. I love, love, love the cover. The cover looks so cool. It's interesting looking at it because, like I said, I've seen copies online, but I hadn't seen like the final, final copy yet. So just seeing like the little details that were changed right at the end. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. I love the illustrations. This was the first book that I worked with an illustrator and I absolutely love what she did. She did so good. And it was really cool getting to work with an illustrator too. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Oh my goodness, I'm just so proud of this book. All right, I want to flip, I'm gonna flip to the end because I want to see my author's page. Let's see. There it is, oh my gosh, there's my picture and my biography. Ah, oh, that's so cool. That's amazing. And there on the back, there's my name too. A little shorter biography about me. Oh my goodness, I am just so, so proud of this book. I just love it so much. There's my name again. I'm just so so proud of this book and it's not to say that I'm not proud of Geology for Kids which is the first children's book that I wrote but when I was contacted about writing a book that shared uh, figures from women's history that helped gain rights for women here in the United States I was just so excited because women's history is something that just gets left out a lot and I'm just so excited to tell young girls stories about these women that do get left out of history a lot and hopefully inspire them to uh, make change in areas of their lives where they feel like they are being underserved. So this book is just something that I'm really proud of. So I wanted to sit down for a minute and tell you guys a little bit about writing this book in the process and then answer some questions that you guys submitted to me on Instagram. So I was actually contacted by the publishing company that I worked with when I wrote Geology for Kids. They contacted me, actually it's been over a year, like a year and a half ago. And so I wrote a woman's history book. We It went through editing, it went through layout. It was actually about to come out at the start of last school year and, or it was scheduled to come out at the start of last school year. And then after it had finished layout and it was getting ready to go into production, COVID hit. So the publishing company decided to hold 
all of the titles that were in production just to kind of see how COVID went and how that affected their sales and everything else. So I didn't even know for a while I thought this book wasn't even going to get released at all. And then in January of this year, so almost a year after they had contacted me the first time, they contacted me again and they said, we're ready to put this book back into production, but we've decided to make some changes because while this book was, while this title was being held, a lot of things happened. Um, there was a big anniversary of the women's suffrage movement, Black Lives Matter movement happened. There was just a lot of things that happened during that time. And so the editor and I, we sat down and we kind of talked about how we needed to change this book up a little bit. Originally, the book that we wrote, it just featured women that made contributions in all areas of society. And we decided, let's narrow it down. Let's focus it on women who made contributions to women's rights. And we also decided that the book needed to be more diverse. Originally, it was mostly white women with a few black women in there. And so I am so proud of what we came up with. The editor and I, we really dug. We looked to find women that have become hidden figures in history, either due to race or culture or just different things. And I'm really proud of because the books, the people that we have shared this book with so far, they've actually acknowledged that they don't know most of the women in the book. And that's an exciting thing. And I'm excited that we didn't just feature white and black women, but we found Asian women and American Indians and Hispanic women, all who played a part in the women's rights movements throughout the United States. So I'm incredibly proud of this book. I'm excited because you guys know that we are in the process of adopting from China and it is incredibly hard to find books with Asian characters and figures. And I'm so excited that we actually found one Asian woman who really played a significant role in the women's suffrage movement. And we were able to highlight her in here. So I'm just incredibly, incredibly excited to finally get to share this book with you guys after over a year and a half of working on it. So now let's go ahead and answer some of the questions that you guys submitted to me on Instagram. Okay, so there's two questions that I pretty much received the most. And the first question is, what are the steps for writing a book? So the first step is finding your publisher. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in just a second. So after you have a publisher and an idea for what your book is, you need to actually outline the book. And so this is something usually you're going to work on it with your publishing company, with your editor, because they're coming into it with a goal in mind of this book needs to be this many pages with about this many words on each page. So having that outline is really important because it's going to make sure that you stick to the parameters that the publishing company has set for that book. Now, after your outline is created, that's when the research and the writing begins. And you basically just write like crazy for a couple of weeks. I think, I, I wanna say I spent five or six weeks researching and writing this book, which is really not a whole lot of time. So you're just writing, 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 and researching like crazy for that short amount of time. And along the way, you're sending chapters to your editor, getting feedback from them as you're going through and writing. Now, after you finish writing, it goes, the whole manuscript goes to the editor. They give you feedback, you edit it. And basically what you're gonna find after that is there is a long editing process. So then it goes to a developmental editor. They send you feedback, you edit again. Then it goes to a copy editor. They send you feedback and you edit again. Now, since this is a history book, it also went through some additional rounds of editing with a fact checker and then somebody that also checked for bias and tone and all of those things. And after those rounds came back to me again. After the editing was finished, I also worked with an illustrator. So during the initial writing stage for each chapter, I kind of created mock-ups or looked for images as examples, wrote things out. I'm definitely not an artist, so I was not illustrating this book, but I sent the illustrator examples and mock-ups of kind of what we wanted for each chapter. 
So the illustrator worked on that as well. She sent all the images to me. I provided feedback. We had a couple rounds that way. After the text and the illustrations were done, then it goes to layout. So that's where they actually format the book and what it is going to look like page by page. Layout comes back to me. I make any final revisions that I want on it. Um, usually at that point, any revisions we do make are very, very minor. And once everything is approved, then it goes into production. So that is kind of a very brief rundown of the process for writing a book. Now, the next question that I got, and this is one I received a lot, and I said I would mention this, and that is, how do you find a publisher? Now, my situation was kind of unique because of my role in curriculum development and writing textbooks and curriculum for different educational companies. My publisher actually reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in writing nonfiction books for kids for them. So mine was kind of a unique situation that doesn't happen a whole lot. I was lucky in that sense, but just because a publisher hasn't reached out to you doesn't mean that you can't find one. I have several friends who are published authors and really if writing a children's book is something that you want to do, you can make it happen if you're willing to go for it. In my video where I talk about how I became a curriculum developer, I talk about how I was contacting like 20 curriculum and textbook companies a week asking them if they had work that I could do. Same thing with writing a book. If you wanna write a book but you don't have publishers reaching out to you, you reach out to them until you find one that's willing to work with you. I know a lot of publishers have open forums on their site where if you have an idea for a book, you can submit that idea and they will reach out to people. And don't be afraid to see send emails and letters. Yes, you may get rejected, but if this is something you really wanna do, you you have to chase down the people that you want to work with. Nobody is going to be passionate about your dream except for you. And then the last question that I received is what is your most and least favorite part of writing a book? Okay, so my most favorite part, you actually got to see it in this video. My most favorite part is once you've finished everything, you've worked so hard on it, and then you get to hold the book in your hands for, your, for the first time and actually see the product of your work. I love that. I also love being able to see other people experience the book as well and hold it in their hands. That's always very, very cool. Um, oh, and particularly for writing this book, there was something so cool that happened. When I signed my contract to write this book, I did a post on my Instagram that said, exciting news, I've just signed a contract to write my second children's book, just kind of announcing it. And in the comments of that post, Ron Clark actually left a comment congratulating me on the book. Um, if you're an educator, you probably know who Ron Clark is. He's a big deal in the teacher community. And when I was in college, I read all of his books. I watched all his videos and everything. And he was just such an inspiration for me in just really combining teaching and creativity. I've taken all of that both into the classroom and into my work as a curriculum developer. So having him comment on my post was like a complete full circle moment. It was so, so cool. Okay, so that was some of my favorite parts of writing a book. Let's talk about my least favorite part of writing a book. So to be honest, I love research and writing. That's why I'm a curriculum developer because I love those things. So I don't necessarily mind any part of the writing process. I don't mind editing. I'm able to take um, constructive criticism because I have to do it all the time working in uh, curriculum. The one part of writing the book that I don't really like having to do is I am an introverted person and typically when you write a book the publishing company is going to want you to do a lot of marketing for the book when it's time to release it and a lot of reaching out to people and this and that and just because of my personality and being more introverted it is so uncomfortable for me. I really have to step outside of my comfort zone reaching out to people and just marketing the book one-on-one -on -one with different people. So that's something that for me, I kind of struggle with. But if you're a more extroverted person, that may be very, very easy for you. 
Thank you so much for joining us today as I got to see my book for the very first time. Now remember, if you are interested in winning a copy, leave that timestamp below where you saw the hidden penny lane and let me know who your favorite bold woman in history is. And if you're interested in purchasing copies, I've also left the link below where you can purchase the book on Amazon. So thank you guys for your support and I hope you enjoy the book. Music